John Michaels, at John Michaels U, hanging out with you. One more segment to go. This segment brought to you by our good buddies at Coffee AM. Coffee AM, they'll get you up in the morning. When you wake up my time of the morning, you need to do whatever you can to get up and get out of bed. Uh, a couple of things going on baseball-wise. Uh, Sal Licata, our good friend from WFAN, I use that term very loosely, our good friend who made fun of the station that I currently work at. He made fun of the Braves. Braggadociously, back in May, he said, the NL East is over. The NL East is done. And suddenly, he's, he, he's had to walk it back and walk it out like he's DJ Unk. That's uh, what he really had to do because that 10-and-a-half game lead magically is down to three-and-a-half. It actually got to two-and-a-half. And then, unfortunately, the Braves' bullpen wasted what was a magnificent outing from Charlie Morton the other day. They blow a game late to the Cincinnati. Braves did win last night on 4th of July with all the rain and everything, about a two-and-a-half-hour rain delay. They pick up a win, 6-3. to three. Good news for the Braves is 24-7 and seven over the last 31 games. I mean, it is just absolutely phenomenal what they're doing. Beat a good team in St. Louis yesterday. Obviously won three or four against the Giants. Did lose two out of three to the Dodgers, but that's all fine and dandy. Second good part of everything, the, the starting pitching. My goodness, Max Fried, great. Spencer Strider, great. Charlie Morton had a one-hitter through seven innings. Uh, and then last night, Kyle Wright was going to pick up his 10th win if it wasn't for the rain delay. And he ended up having to go out after four innings and sit for two and a half hours, didn't come back and get a chance to get the win. Which, by the way, baseball. So I get the rule. Five innings pitch gets you in line for the win. When you have a long-ass rain delay like that, like maybe there should be a time limit, an hour or two if there is a rain delay, maybe an hour. If your starting pitcher has to sit an hour and can't come back in and he's in line for the win when the rain delay happens, how about give him the win? Kyle Wright would have his 10th win. And maybe um, uh, Mark Zeno would yell at me. He's a baseball purist. He would get mad that things aren't you know going perfectly. But I'm just like, you know what? He was going to get the dub. It was 6-1 to one when he exited the game. He would have been able to pitch one or two more innings. But to back to this point, not, not to kind of go off on a tangent, but Braves are doing tremendous work pitching the baseball. If there is one concern for this baseball team right now, it is the back end of the bullpen. And Kenley Jansen will be back on July the 12th. At least that's the reports that are out there. He's dealt with the irregular heartbeat before. Should be back to having that thing. Uh, taken care of in July 12th, he'll be back. The Will Smith roller coaster is back from a year ago. I swear, watching Will Smith is like being on a ride at Six Flags. You go up, you go down, you go up, you down, you're spinning all around, and you hope, you hope by God, at the end of the day, you come out healthy. Last night, he's got bases loaded, six to three game. Albert Pujols, thank goodness. He yanks one down the left field line, looked like a home run. Uh, it ended up being a foul ball, and then he gets a weak grounder back, and you get up out of there, and the Braves win 6-3. to three. The guy that hasn't been pitching well, other than Will Smith, gets a start tonight, and that's your boy Ian Anderson. And we talked some about Ian last week. The last two starts just have not been very good for Ian Anderson. So we shall see if this is a scenario where Ian Anderson can bounce back today against a good St. Louis team. But some reinforcements arise. So if you're a Braves fan, you feel happy. You go back over the weekend, Adam Duvall unfortunately hit by a pitch in the left hand. X-ray's negative. He shouldn't be out a long time. Eddie Rosario was back last night, came into a rousing Eddie, Eddie, Eddie chant there at Truist Park, ended up getting a hit, one of his four hits on the year, which is amazing, hit a line drive single to right field. You need Eddie Rosario back because I think for more than anything, it really balances out what the lineup is. The, the lineup had become a little bit right-handed heavy with Duvall, Acuna, Obviously, you know, Zuna being guys that kind of filled two of the three outfield spots and your D8 spot. Or if it's William Contreras, he's in there as well. Your only lefties right now were Matt Olson and Michael Harris. Well, now you get another one in there with Eddie Rosario. When you get Ozzie Albies back, whenever that may be, you're going to get him back in a switch hitting capacity. And I think that balances out the lineup a little bit better. So that was good to see. Tyler Matzik back from AAA. You much need his arm. Hopefully the arm that was back from October a year ago where he was lights out and getting people 
out. We'll continue the Braves conversation in just a second, but a word from our good friends at Coffee AM. As coffee never tasted so good, ATL, and it's the best small batch coffee roaster right here in Atlanta. You can use a coupon code right now for 15% off all coffees, teas, and gift sets. It's pretty simple. Locked on. Put that all in there. They've got the freshest coffee you can get. Most are roasted and shipped the same day. You want to go right now to coffeeam.com backslash locked on and take uh, take a look at their full menu of coffees, teas, and gift sets. Again, that's coffeeam.com backslash locked on. Use the coupon, coupon code locked on at checkout and get 15% off your first order of coffees, teas, and gift sets. Coffee AM, the best small batch coffee roaster in America and Atlanta as well. I drink some coffee AM in the morning. Again, when you get up 4.30 in the morning, you need something to get yourself rolling. Braves have continued to roll, and like I said, that lead down to three and a half. A couple other things Braves related. I saw a stat yesterday, and maybe it's because I don't watch as much baseball as I should on a night. Like, I watch the Braves, but I'm not all – a lot of times it's with the volume down, and I'm watching the game, and I'm looking to see what's going on. I'm not necessarily paying attention to all the graphics and infomercials they put up. I've never heard the stat barreled balls before last night or barreling up a pitch. I get it. Exit velo, how important that is. But there was literally a stat on the Bally – I think it was Bally Sports last night that said the Braves – lead the majors in barreled balls. Who comes up with this? Like, who is the guy that's sitting in an analytics room and goes, you know what? We're going to go back and watch every single swing, every single at-bat of everybody and find out if it's a barreled ball or not. Now, a lot of that has to do, I believe it's the exit velocity has to be over 90, whatever. It was just a stat. We learn things new every day in sports. It was a stat I, quite frankly, had never seen on a major league broadcast. But I think what you need right now, Kenley Jansen back. You need Tyler Matzikin. Move Will Smith back to the eighth inning role. Get guys back in their design slots. I'd actually probably put A.J. Minter in the eighth inning role. Let everybody else sort of fall into place and get this thing going. This is a baseball club that absolutely has a chance to make a deep run of good again in October. Real quick, quick before we get out of here. We, and we talked a lot of NBA on Friday. The Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving situation rubs me the wrong way because it's held up the remainder of trades and or free agency. Somebody asked me this on YouTube the other day. Did I feel Kevin Durant was holding up the rest of the NBA? And the answer is yes. Because you think about teams that potentially have called about Kevin Durant and haven't been told outright no, which I'm sure Brooklyn has told some people kick rocks, you guys are done. You're not a part of this. Outside of those teams, people are probably holding off. And, and how does it affect somebody like the Hawks? Now, the Hawks made a move. Kevin Herter sent to Sacramento in exchange. Justin Holiday. They bring back Mo Harkless in a first-round pick. I get it. It was cap. It was recoup a first-round pick for all the picks that you sent out uh, earlier to go get DeJounte Murray. You know, you maybe had a log jam at shooting guard with, with Bogey Bogdanovich and obviously DeJounte Murray and, and Kevin Herter. I would not personally have traded Kevin Herter. That's me because I thought he was the second best pure shooter on this basketball team only behind Trey Young. But what's happened with this Kevin Durant situation impacts what's going on with John Collins. And think about this for a second. And I, and I use Miami for an example because the Heat had been linked not only to John Collins but to Donovan Mitchell and to Kevin Durant. Well, Pat Riley is not going to put anything together right now that doesn't include Kevin Durant and or Donovan Mitchell. Maybe his contingency ultimately ends up being John Collins, but if you're the Hawks, you have to sit back now and wait. If you're the Lakers and maybe you wanted a John Collins, and I, and I don't know that they do, but if you maybe have wanted a John Collins, they're not going to make any moves until they figure out what's happening with Kyrie Irving or Russell Westbrook. As much, and I am a huge player advocate. I, I love everybody in athletics, go get your money because nothing is guaranteed in sports. The NBA, though, has become a whiny person's league. You don't like you Go ahead, sign your five-year, $250 million max extension. That's awesome. Sign it. But if you want to cry your way out of town in a year from now, you can do so. Brooklyn bet on Kevin Durant, and he's given them 90 games, 90 in three years. They paid him a full-year salary to sit and rehab his Achilles. And I get it. You got arguably the best player on the planet. But you're screwing up the rest of the NBA. The Hawks can't figure like Landry Fields and and Travis Schlink can't put together the roster that they want. And maybe it is. Maybe maybe the Kevin Herter move was the last one. 
Me thinking outside the box, they've tried to get rid of John Collins. Or his name's been in rumors now for like two and a half years. Kevin Durant, Brooklyn, figure it out. Either stay or trade his ass. And let's let the rest of the NBA get on with their business. Now, in fairness, Brooklyn owes Kevin Durant zero, nothing. Don't know him a damn thing. They can tell him, kick rocks, you're going to either play for us or you're not. You want to sit out like Ben Simmons, sit out. Because what they know is Kevin Durant's a guy that loves ball. He loves basketball. He ain't. I don't think he's a guy that wants to sit out. But the flip side is, what's your return on investment at that point if you're handing a guy close to $42 million, $43 million? It's nothing. My point to this, how it affects the Hawks, I'd like to see the Hawks roster in full. See it in full. Stop waiting. John Collins, Clint Capella, whoever the hell else they may move. Let's get the, DeAndre Ayton can't find a sign and trade until Kevin Durant and Brooklyn figure out what they're doing. We'll be back tomorrow. Really appreciate it. You guys go ahead and uh, subscribe. Locked on Atlanta, locked on ATL. Download it on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow everywhere. You can follow me as well at John Michaels U. Till tomorrow, in for Zen as well. Then have a great rest of your day.